this is the unit 3 test remediation video. We will go over the uh, most missed questions in the unit 3 test so that you can go back and retake the unit 3 test for a better score. So the first question we're going to go over today is number three. This is from the passage one, The Open Window by H. H. Monroe, otherwise known as Saki. So the question, which line from the story foreshadows the trick the niece will play? So we're looking for something that is going to foreshadow something. And we know that foreshadowing is hints or clues towards an event or something that's going to happen, an action that will happen later in the story. So which line from the story foreshadows the trick the niece will play? A, her great tragedy happened just three years ago, said the child. That would be since your sister's time. B, my aunt will be down presently, Mr. Nuttall, said a very self-possessed young lady of 15. In the meantime, you must try and put up with me. C, then you know practically nothing about my aunt, pursued the self-possessed young, uh, young lady. So the answer here is C, because uh, if... Frampton Nuttall knows nothing about Vera's aunt, then she can make up a story and she can say whatever she wants about her aunt and the situation. And, and she does. That's, that's what she does. She makes up a story and plays a trick on Nuttall. Uh, Mr. Nuttall and um, makes up, you know, all kinds of things that, that don't aren't really true and that don't really happen. And so because Frampton Nuttall doesn't know anything about Vera's aunt, she is able to make up that story, which she does. Okay, and that, that foreshadows the fact that she's going to play the trick on Mr. Frampton Nuttall and tell him all kinds of things that aren't true. Okay, so then number seven is from passage two. Excerpt from The Cast of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. The question is, how does the author create a sense of tension? How does the author create a sense of tension? Well, the only way to really figure out the answer here is by process of elimination. Because all of these could possibly create a sense of tension. We have A, the author uses dialogue to show, slow the pace. B, the author uses flashback to reveal secrets about the main characters. C, the author intentionally withholds information from readers, leaving them in the dark about the characters' motivations. Now, if all of those were true about the story, then they all would be able to create a sense of tension. However, only one of these is actually true. So we have to use our process of elimination to figure out the correct answer here. So the correct answer here is A, the author uses dialogue to slow the pace. Now B, the author uses flashback to reveal secrets about the main characters. Well, there is no flashback in the story. So if we look into the story and we look for a flashback, there isn't one. It doesn't exist. So we can automatically get rid of that answer choice just because, well, that doesn't exist. There is no flashback to reveal secrets about the main characters. We actually are provided with the background information 
on the characters in the introduction of the passage. Okay. And then C, the author intentionally withholds information from readers, leaving them in the dark about the character's motivations. Well, that's not true either. Because information is not withheld about the narrator's motivations. We are directly told that his actions are for revenge. We as readers know that the character's motivation is revenge. And so that just isn't true. We are not, uh, you know, we are given that information. That, that information is not withheld from the readers, from us. So it has to be A. The author uses dialogue to slow the pace. And if you think about it, when we do look at the dialogue, it can possibly slow the pace to create a sense of tension. So by process of elimination, that is, has to be the correct answer. Number eight uh, is also from passage two, excerpt from the cast of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. So read these sentences from the cast of Amontillado. Enough, he said. The cough is a mere nothing. It will not kill me. I shall not die of a cough. True, true, I replied. Which literary technique is used in these sentences? And so we're looking for a literary technique, which pacing, withholding information, and foreshadowing are all, th all three of those are literary techniques. But the only one that works here is foreshadowing. And so we have A, pacing, maybe, C, a B, withholding information, hmm, not necessarily, and C, foreshadowing. Well, by saying true here, the narrator is confirming that Fortunata will indeed not die of a cough. And so here we are given a hint of a future event, right? We don't know yet what will happen to Fortunato, but we do know that the narrator is planning to do something for him, to him for revenge. And so maybe he's planning to kill him and therefore knows exactly how Fortunato will die. And so this gives the reader a clue for something that will happen later in the story. And so the author is foreshadowing the character's death here. Okay, so this is an example of foreshadowing. And then finally, number 16, which is from Passage 4, excerpt from The Most Dangerous Game by Richard Connell. How does Zaroff's attitude advance the plot of this passage? So we're looking for Zaroff's attitude. Zaroff's attitude. How does it advance the plot of this passage? We have A. Since Zaroff sees Rainsford as sentimental, he misjudges him as an opponent. B. Because Zaroff is intelligent, he tries to be a master of men. C. Since Zaroff enjoys conversation with Rainsford, he uses it to analyze his enemy. Now, the correct answer is A. Uh, if we look at the word sentimental, sentimental means emotional. And emotional can be any kind of attitude, right? Sentimental is a specific type of emotion. And so if someone is feeling sentimental, um, that is an attitude. Okay, so this is, um, this is an attitude, an, an emotional state. Since Zaroff sees Rainsford as a sentimental and or an emotional person, he misjudges him as an opponent. So Zaroff attitude 
is that he misjudges his opponent. Okay. His attitude is, oh, he's not that good of a hunter. Maybe he's not that intelligent. Maybe he's not that great at, uh, at doing what he says he's, he, he's going to do. So, uh, I got this. I can beat him. No problem. So that's an attitude, right? The other options, because Zarf is intelligent, he tries to be a master of men. Now, intelligent, he is intelligent. Zarf is intelligent. And he does try to be a master of men. That is all correct information. However, intelligent is not an attitude. Okay? Intelligent is the amount of smarts or how smart a person is or the type of smarts that a person has. Intelligent is not an attitude. And so even though this information is correct, Zaroff is intelligent, he tries to be a master of men, it's not an attitude and that's what we're looking for here. How does Zaroff's attitude advance the plot of, his pass of this passage? And so we can get rid of B just because of that. Again, C is the same thing. Since Zaroff enjoys conversation with Rainsford, he uses it to analyze his enemy. He does. He does enjoy conversation with Rainsford. He does use that conversation to analyze his enemy. That is all correct information. However, again, it's not an attitude. Enjoying conversation with someone... Analyzing his enemy, that is not an attitude. It's not a thought or feeling or emotion about something or someone. So an attitude is based on opinion. And the an opinion that Zaroff has is that Rainsford is sentimental and, and he and because of that he misjudges him as an opponent. But the fact that he's intelligent, the fact that he tries to be a master of men, the fact that he enjoys conversation with Rainsford, and the fact that he uses it, it to analyze his enemy uh, is, again, not an attitude. So the other options, two options, just don't show an attitude. And then for, for that reason, we can see that A is the correct answer. Now we can also prove that by looking into the passage. So here we see uh, Zaroff is laughing at Rainsford and his emotional ideas of human life. It says, I can't believe you are serious, General Zaroff. This is a grisly joke. Why should I not be serious? I'm speaking of hunting. Hunting? Good God, Ger Zen General Zaroff. What do you, what do you speak of is murder. The general laughed with good entire good nature. He regarded Rainsford quizzically. I refuse to believe that so modern and civilized a young man as you harbors romantic ideas about the value of human life. Surely your experiences in the war did not make me condone cold-blooded murder, finished Rainsford stiffly. So he's laughing at Rainsford here. When he calls when he says that Rainsford has romantic ideas about the value of human life He's talking about uh, I, impractical or idealistic ideas about the value of human life. And so then he says, uh, it says, laughter shook the general. Again, he's laughing at Rainsford here and his ideas about the value of human life. How extraordinarily droll you are. Droll means amusing or funny. One does not expect nowadays to find a young man of the educated class, even in America, with such a naive, naive is immature or innocent, and if I may so, say so, mid-Victorian point of view. Mid-Victorian point of view is a reference to an old-fashioned or outdated perspective. It's like finding a snuff box in a, in a limousine. Uh, well, doubtless you had Puritan ancestors, so many Americans appear to have had I'll wager you'll forget your notions. Your notions is your ideas or your thinking when you go hunting with me. 
You've a genuine new thrill in store for you, Mr. Rainsford. Thank you, I'm a hunter, not a murderer. Dear me, said the general, quite unruffled. Again, that unpleasant word, but I think I can show you that your scruples, scruples are ethics or morals, are quite unfounded. So he's laughing at Rainsford here. He's kind of, you know, putting his nose up at his impractical or uh, immature or innocent ideas of the value of human life. He's saying that his ideas and his ethics and morals, his thinking are old-fashioned or outdated. And he's not agreeing with his perspective or point of view here. So he's definitely misjudging him as an opponent. Even though Rainsford might be sentimental, he might be an emotional person. He still is a good hunter and he beats Zaroff as, at his own game, right? So even though uh, Zaroff sees Rainsford as sentimental, he shouldn't have misjudged him as an opponent. He should have, shouldn't have underestimated him, but he does. And so that's how Zaroff's attitude advance the plot of this passage. Without him misjudging Rainsford as an opponent, he wouldn't have lost at the most dangerous game. Right? We would have a very different ending to the story. So that is the end of our remediation video. Please retake the Unit 3 test for a better score. Good luck.